All right, guys, it's Friday. What do you say, Fernando? Woohoo! That's right, for all you guys that have tomorrow off, kudos to you, we don't. Anyways, what we have here today is a Toyota Tundra. This guy is going to get the exact same system as the Toyota Tundra video we put up. It's a 2017. It's got the factory nav. It's got the, it's got all the factory touchscreen and all that stuff. We're taking all that out. We're putting in a 4201. We're going to use the iData Link Maestro piece in it that we've already flashed. You guys have seen that enough. We're gonna put the Focal Perfect Fit speakers all the way around, and we're gonna put a Rockford P312 wedge behind the back seat with a grill. Now, if any of you saw the video on the Toyota Tundra, it's pretty much gonna be the exact same system. What we're gonna do though today though is try to show you things that might have gotten left out of the video for time or we just didn't film it. I know, right? How is that even possible? These videos are so damn long now, we don't forget anything. Joking. All right, so Fernando's got the GoPro. We're gonna get things set up. We've already got the car dressed up. While he's doing that, let's take a look at some of this equipment we're putting in. So here's the equipment. We have the USB retention and all that there. Here's your PDX V9, your Adding Link Maestro, your six channel RCAs, your 4200. But this guy right here, let's take a look at this guy. This is the Metra 998252. Comes with the pocket and inside the pocket are some panel clips. There's also a bag of screws. And then wrapped in this white right here, you have some brackets. And then there's this guy right here. Look at that. Doesn't that look snazzy? So we have the factory brushed look on it. It's a high gloss, which looks awesome against the Pioneer or the Kenwood Exelon for that matter. What makes this so doable is that you are retaining this factory look. You're getting all the cool features of the aftermarket radio, like CarPlay, Android Auto. He wants Android Auto. Hey, for all you Android Auto guys, Waze works now. So the first thing on the list to do is get this back seat out. We're gonna put the Rockford P312 wedge box behind it. It fits perfectly. You do need to put a grill on the speaker. factory amplifier. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. This is where our aftermarket amplifier will go. Last time we did one of these we found out we can use two 1761 harnesses to plug directly into these so we don't have to cut them or do anything like that. Now we're going to use this to make our template. All right so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and this and transform them into one solid piece of plastic so that they, they fit together. So we're gonna grab a tape measure, 16 and three quarters, and then the maximum width of this guy here, which is gonna say eight. If we can go longer on this, that'll give us room to zip tie the wires, because I'd like to go like 10 or 12, so that we have plenty of room to fasten all the wiring down as opposed to just have them come out. So we'll go measure to see how far over we can go. So it looks like 10 is gonna be the max. So let's go cut some plastic. All right, so we're gonna trace the basic measurements of this onto here. And now we'll go ahead and add the amplifier and that way we can kind of figure out where this needs to be. And there again, I'm gonna put this in the car so I can eyeball it. All right, so, so far we know we need to remove these two areas. We're gonna go ahead and remove these, drill some holes so we can take this over and figure out there's another area we need to remove here where the main wiring harness is coming out, but let's get this cut up. All right, so there was a little area here that needed to be removed. We're gonna go ahead and round it over now. So we have our panel made. We have the notch out for where the factory wiring harness comes up out. Ours is gonna go through. We've rounded it over to match the curvature of the amplifier. We've added the holes. So we're all set. We can go ahead and screw this bad boy on here. 
So when you remove the end plate, make sure you put the screw in here so you don't lose it. Now, the reason why I've gone ahead and taken this off is because when I put in an amplifier, I like to set the switches where they need to be before I get it into the car. It's kind of like do this first. So, and what I mean by that is we know channels one and two are gonna be high pass. So we'll go ahead and turn on the high pass for both of those. We're gonna go ahead and turn the gains all the way down. We'll open the subsonic filter up. And then I also like to put a default crossover point of 80 all the way around. Now the reason why I do that is because let's say I'm out uh, doing something else and Fernando turns it on and it, it goes to full blast or blares or, or who knows what happens. It's just a habit I've had for years and years and years. Uh, 80 hertz is at least some form of a safety. Once we get into tuning it, we of course change all that. All right, so interrupting Fernando's cool time lapse real quick. These are the Focal Perfect Fit Toyota speakers. Mm -hmm. Let's take a really close look at them, just in case you guys haven't seen them before. So they're designed to match up bolt for bolt to a Toyota. It comes with the foam. It comes with the factory harness that just it just plugs right in. Now the one thing is this: they come with this tweeter protection. Right before you put the door panel on is when you remove this. You don't remove it before then. It looks just like the factory speaker, which is right here. But it's a sexy and much better sounding Focal. Here are the two factory plugs. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take you through the steps that we use to identify what each one of these wires is. And then once we know what set goes to what speakers, how we figure out what polarity on here it is so that we can then go to rewire the harnesses that we're gonna plug into these. So the first step, of course, you need a tone generator. And you know, you're gonna use that to do something like that. Next, we're gonna use the PT9A polarity generator. And what this does is the, this creates the ticking sound that you guys have heard in lots of our videos where it goes tick, tick, tick. This actually will generate that for us so that we can then go in and put these leads on here and we'll hear the ticking sound. And then next we're gonna use our portable polarity tester so we can then go to the speaker and figure out if we have it right or wrong and then switch it here and then we'll write that down all in our little book. The easiest way to do this is like we said, we identify each corner of the car as one, two, three, four. One is the driver, three is the driver's rear, two and four on this side. In this case, it has eight speakers, two tweeters in the front, two tweeters in the back, two mid-range in the front, two mid-range in the back. So what we do is we write down one tweeter positive negative, one door positive negative, and so on and so forth, all the way down to where we have listed eight speakers. And then we'll go ahead and we'll write in those colors. And then you have a 10 pin harness and a 12 pin harness. So we'll also write a 10 or a 12 next to it so that we know for future where that is in the harness. Is it in the 12 pin or is it in the 10 pin? Let's get started. So the first one in this harness is gonna be one, which is part of the 12. So we're gonna go ahead and write a 12 next to it. And we'll go to the next one. That's going to be two tweeter in the dash, right a 12 next to that. All right, so at this point, we know that the driver's door speakers are in the 10 and everything else is in the 12. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the polarity test. 
All right, so we know that the top of the harness here where the clip is for this side is positive. So that's gonna be a light green and blue. That's the other side. All right, so on the driver's side, purple is positive, pink is negative, and the top is also still positive. Now, we have a 761 harness right here that we can test, and when we plug it in, it's actually pinned correctly. So all we need to do on this one is remove all these extra wires that we're not gonna be using. So let's move on to the 12 pin. Now, another thing I like to do is actually draw the pin diagram on a sheet of paper too so that when I go over to the bench to repin it I have a visual I don't have to keep walking back and forth all right so I realize all you guys out there are like hey man I don't have all these tools that's okay you don't necessarily need them there are other ways you can do this if you're doing 12 volt installation of any kind you have to have a digital multimeter if you don't have one of these you shouldn't be doing anything 12 volt related. Now you can pick up a digital multimeter from like Walmart for 20 bucks if needed. Now how do you use it for this type of situation? For this, you definitely wanna be replacing the speakers. And my guess is if you're putting a big five channel amp in your car, you are replacing the speakers or a four channel or whatever. I mean, this works for cars other than the Toyota. This is just a how we do it. So what you would do is you would take the door off like you're gonna put the speaker in it. Pull the speaker out, cut the speaker lead, take a nine volt battery, touch it to positive negative. Watch the speaker move out watch the speaker move in. Nine volts have positive and negative labeled on them. We do have a video showing you how to do this if you're like, what is he talking about? And if one of you reminds me, I'll link it in the show notes if you can't figure this out. What you're gonna do is the speaker's gonna move up and that's gonna mean it's positive. Look at the wires and see which one was on the positive terminal of the nine. Let's say for example, it was green. So now what you wanna do is take your digital multimeter, put it on this guy here, okay? And what that guy does is when these two things touch like this, it makes a noise. So now what you can do is plug this into the green wire, it doesn't matter which one, red or black, it doesn't matter. Plug that into the speaker wire on the speaker that you're testing and plug this one in at the amplifier. Now, if it's the right wire, it'll do that. So if you know that the green wire is positive and it is, let's say, number three, then you'll write three green positive. And then go to the next one. Let's say, let's blue test it. And then you'll write three blue negative. And then you'll do that throughout every car as you pull out and remove the speakers. And by the time you're done removing the speakers and putting new ones in, you'll have your amplifier decoded so that now when you go to the amplifier, you have all the information you need. All right, so for depinning, I have three depinning tools. I've acquired these, some of them I've bought. This is a Snap-on, this is my favorite, but I've made this one. This, this one you can't even buy from Snap-on. I just ground the head down of one of their panel tools. Uh, this one is a Matco, I've had this for a couple months now. This is really nice for certain applications. And then this is a Delphi. This one you can get on Amazon. Uh, we might even have a link to this one in our description. You guys always ask, these are the ones we use. Um, you can also just use you know, one of these cool little micro screwdrivers. Sometimes if you file these down, you can get the same results. So let's get started. First thing we wanna do is take the four pin and pull all these pretty colors out of here because we're gonna need them. Now one of these harnesses is pretty much done. All we have to do is remove all these other wires that are in here. Now for this 1761, we're just gonna go ahead and depin the whole thing. All right, so what we're actually gonna do is we're going to combine these two together because on one side, it's a three, and on the other side, it's a two, meaning the whole. So we need to actually cut one of the, cut this to down to just one, and then we're gonna shave the side off of this, and then we're gonna glue the two together to make the harness that we need. So when we drew this diagram on here, I made it so that this was wires to the back, meaning that if this was, this would be the pin. So if I took this, it's gonna plug in exactly like that as it was sitting on the paper. So now all we have to do is add in our pins. So now we're gonna test fit it, make sure it works, and then we'll add some glue, some tape, and get this thing all built up. Fits like a champ, so we'll just go ahead and add some CA glue. So I've gone ahead and added a notch to it here. That way I can put a zip tie around it for added strength. So we have our two harnesses that are gonna plug into where the factory amp was. Let's take a quick break and open some mail. Not mail from you guys, just, you know, stuff I bought on Amazon. It's for the show, so let's check it out. That's not saying if you wanted to send us stuff, we wouldn't take it, I'm just saying. All right, Fernando lost his crimpers the other day, so we ordered him a new set of crimpers. He needed a new card for the new GoPro we got. Tripod mounts, we've been running low on these. Ferro crimpers. We'll look at these more in a little bit. 
This is probably the thing I'm most excited about. I know what you're thinking, it's just a power strip, but this is a cool power strip. Let me show you why. So we have about, I don't know, 10 or eight, I don't know, a ton of these little battery chargers for all the cameras we use. And the problem with most power strips is they all plug in this way, this one plugs in that way so I can line on them all up and mount it to the wall. New laptop for editing the vlog on the go. Back to the show. All right, so let's take a closer look at the front doors, the six by nine, this is the component set. Now, it, it's a perfect fit, it screws all in, but where the problem lies is this right here. On the factory speaker, the speaker gets plugged into the top. On the focal, it gets plugged into the side. So you do have to lengthen the factory wire over to here. And on the passenger, it's gonna be on this side, which is really tight, just barely makes it in. But other than that, the speaker looks really good and it's gonna sound amazing. So one of the neat things about the PDX-V9 are these things here. The amp plugs in. It's one of the only amps that I know of is their line of amplifiers that does this. But you have these giant plugs that just plug into the amp. So what that allows you to do is wire it up and get it all set and ready to go. So we'll go ahead and plug everything in here. Now the other thing I like to do is that there's a positive and a negative. And the amp can plug in either direction, it doesn't matter. But what I like to do is I mark the top here with the number, so like for example, this is five because it's a subwoofer. So I mark it on here so that when I pull these things out, I know where it went. All right, so we have everything all set and ready to get into the car. Alright, so we've gone ahead and removed the radio. Now we have all the harnesses here in the dash. We can go through and see which ones we're going to use from the iData. So it does come with the backup camera harness. Then we have the USB, the antenna, and the Sirius XM antenna left. And the navigation tent, I already tucked up in there because he's not doing that. But if you were going to retain these, the GPS and the Sirius XM. They have the new SAT2 antenna harness that comes with both of these for either, for most applications of either Pioneer Kemmerer or Alpine. You can plug these in and retain all that stuff. So that's kind of nice. And of course they sell the USB adapter as well. Looks like we're gonna be using every harness. Let's build the harness, get a dash kit put together and get this thing uh, done.
so the harness is done. Now, what you want to do is make sure that the iData piece is disconnected when you wire this in. That's going to be the last thing you plug in, so that's why it's disconnected now. All right, so we have the 4200 here. We're going to go ahead and put the dash kit over it. Now, really the only thing you have to do to prep this dash kit is you put those clips that came in the bag on here and here, and then there's four little screws that are in the bag. There's actually more than four, there's eight, because two of them are for each side of the pocket that we're not using. So you put those four little screws in, screw this on, and you're all set. Now, the one thing about a metric kit different than the other guys is Metro won't give you any screws at all for the sides of the radio. You have to use the ones that come with the radio. So now we wanna go ahead and screw this thing down. We wanna make sure that it's lined up good. Now metric kits and 4200s are really nice because the pack kits are really tight and look sexy, but sometimes the switch to detach the face hits. These typically have a little bit more room so you don't run into that problem on these, but sometimes you'll actually see a gap here. And for that, we like to put little black weather stripping that we'll put across the top of the radio so that you don't see that gap. All right, so this is all set and ready to go. We're almost there. All right, so we had removed the tape off of this factory harness. So we're gonna go ahead and tape those back up. All right, so we have this all straightened out. Let's start routing our wires where they need to go. All right, so we have the amp mounted. We're gonna leave these unplugged until the very end. We have to do the distortion detecting, so we'll wait till after that. All right, so we're ready to start plugging in all the cables. Like I said, plug in all the radio side first, and then we'll actually plug in the radio, and lastly, we plug in the iData. We're gonna use the factory USB as USB one, because he's gonna be doing Android Auto, so we've gone ahead and we're gonna add in a little USB just for that, because Android Auto is a little bit more sensitive than Apple, and sometimes they don't work so we're gonna try to avoid that. Okay, so now we have everything plugged in. We're gonna go ahead and plug in the iData. All right, so we have volume up, down. Go ahead and put your foot on the brake. All right, so we have pretty much everything working here. We're gonna loosely put this in the dash. He's still hooking up power, so we're gonna wait to screw this down until the power is totally in. And then we'll be ready for tuning and testing and all that fun stuff. Fuse holder is in and the wire is tied up. If you're looking to come through the firewall, there's a nice big factory grommet right there. Just make sure when you're done, you silicone it up so you don't get any water in the car. Okay, so we have the subwoofer in place. Like you saw, we had to remove this and we put some roadkill behind it to toughen it back up. Just push it all the way over. On the floor is a lock for the emergency kit. And there's also a little metal bracket that you saw you had to remove, but you just push it over until you hit that kit. This will go back under there once we get done, but it's just not gonna lock in place. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and test the microphone and this, the rest of the steering wheel controls. Press the push to talk. What's the weather like outside? All right, so the microphone works. We've already tested the backup camera. Let's go ahead and hit eject. Grab the CD. CD's nuts. So dumb. 4200s, all the NEX come with the subwoofers off. Uh, it gets us every time. It's always fun trying to figure out why you don't have any sub sound. We say three, that was 40, 45, right? Yeah, 40, yeah, five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and pop that disc out and put the uh, polarity test disc in. I got greens. Greens all the way around. All right, so we've tested for polarity. We've tested the microphones. We've tested the steering wheel. We've tested the backup camera. We have the gain set. What's left? The auto EQ. That's right. 
Let's do the auto EQ. So if you've never done auto EQ before, most of the Pioneer radios have it. The NEX radios have it in an aux jack behind the radio, uh, unless you're talking about a 6200 or a 5200, in which case they're gonna be through the aux jack in the back. Um, all the normal four digits and the new X series three digit radios are going to have it through their aux jack as well, which if you've seen the show, you've seen us do it. Put the mic where your head is gonna be. Make sure it's in standby. Let's do it. All right, it's done. So go ahead and pull the mic, hit the home button. Now we're gonna put the dash back together real quick and we're gonna listen to it. All right, so this one's done, what do you think? That was good. That was good? Yeah. How did that rear tweeter sound? Plastic. Plasticky. So even though we talked about the last thing you do is do what? Take the plastic Take out. Take the plastic off. Fortunately, the midget was sitting in the back seat. She's not really that short. That one. She's like, why does that speaker sound so weird? I don't know. Oh wait. Oops. No big deal. Thankfully she was in the back though, because we might have missed that one. No, we wouldn't have. <sighs> so this one's done. Hopefully you guys are done. Well, we're never done with Toyotas. Hopefully this won't turn into a Jeep though. And we don't even need to go down this road. All right guys, that's it. On to the next one. Um, two minutes.